This is uh, part two to that 2004 Dodge pickup with the 4.7 liter that had a turn signal issue. Um, I'm at home so I can go through this in a little more detail for you guys and not have to rush so much like I do in the shop. But anyways, the issue, if you haven't watched the part one, was customer was complaining that when the bulb or when the headlights were turned on, whether it be in the park, uh, park lamp position or just the headlight position, and they would turn on the right turn signal, the um, bulbs, uh, the right signal would flash really fast. And then on the um, information center, right below where the odometer is on the dash, it would say it would flash uh, lamp out, lamp out in orange. Um, but anyways, what what had happened was is the customer um, was at another shop and that uh, the other shop had put a new circuit board, uh, rear tail lamp circuit board in to try to fix this issue. Uh, they disconnected the trailer, um, trailer harness or trailer lighting harness, thinking that, you know, there was a ground issue. Um, they had replaced all the bulbs on the right side and still had the issue. So, uh, the way I came to the conclusion that it had a bad bulb socket was if we go to the wiring diagram here, uh, I'll just kind of explain how these uh, this right signal, right bulb circuit works on this particular model. So if you look up here, this, this whole gray portion here is what they call the integrated power module. And it's the under hood fuse block or the TIPM as Chrysler calls them, totally integrated power module. But inside of this and you see these dashed lines like this around this this dashed line box here <clears throat> if you read down here it says front control module that is for the lighting circuit um, it's actual module that lives within the actual fuse block so it's not serviceable it's not like you can just put just the fuel or the um, front control module in you have to replace the whole box if this were the issue but um, the way this system works <clears throat> is if you look up here, there is a relay that's inside of the um, integrated power module, and it's called the park lamp relay. Um, you have your trailer tow right turn relay, uh, trailer tow left turn relay, okay? <clears throat> and essentially what you have is you have a fuse up here, um, this fuse right here, fuse 15, uh, 50 amp and it's powering up the switch side of the park lamp relay and the control side and it's powering it up at all times key on key off doesn't matter it's hot all the time and if you look on this this side of this relay um, this is the control side because you have the coil and this is the switch side right so the fuse powers up this side and it comes down and in to the front control module where it says park relay control. And what this is, is when you turn on the park lamp switch on the dash, this right here, this front control module, knows that you turned on the park switch because right here you can see headlamp switch. And if you look, you have park, right? Well. I'm not going to get into the details of too much of how this portion of it works, but I can tell you this. If you look right here, down on the instrument cluster, it says right there, PCI bus. Okay, and if you follow that wire up, you can see that it breaks off here and goes to computer data line system. And then it also comes up and in on this white violet on pin 10 there into where it says PCI bus and it's going to talk to this front control module so when you switch your headlights on or put it to the park lamps on the headlamp switch there's communication taking place with this front control module to say hey I want park lamps or hey I want headlights okay and the front control module is going to wake up and it's going to control 
the bulbs, okay? And I'm gonna show you how the, the bulbs are controlled, you know, when you turn your turn signals on or whatever. So, <clears throat> back up to this relay. You switch on your, uh, your park lamp, or you switch on the park lamps, and what's gonna happen is the front control module is gonna turn on this relay, and it's gonna do that by giving this power on the control side a ground. Once this grounds it, it's gonna create a magnetic field in here in this coil, pull this switch closed, which is also getting its power feed from the same fuse, and that's going to complete the circuit, provide power down to these fuses, fuse 34, fuse 32, and fuse 33. Once that happens, all three of those fuses become hot. Now, if you follow fuse, uh, we'll start with fuse 34 here, follow fuse 34, this 10 amp, down on this white yellow wire, it comes down and it comes to a splice here and it also comes into the left front park turn signal lamp. Now there was no issue with the left front uh, turn signal slash park lamp, okay? No issue at all, it worked just fine. Um, if you look at this one, fuse 32, 10 amp, coming down on this white yellow, it also comes down and comes to a splice. And I'll show you where that splice, those splices go in a second here comes down goes into the right front park turn signal lamp okay this is where our issue was this socket right here not the bulb itself but the socket was the issue and the issue was a resistance problem in this socket right on um, right where the ground where it comes down to ground here internal to the socket was where the issue was okay um, so the way this works Power comes down, comes through the coil within the bulb, okay, and it finds its path to this ground, which is on the right side of the engine compartment. When it does that, it lights up the park lamp, okay, the amber lamp that's always on when you turn on the park lamps or the headlights, okay? That worked just fine. So we, we know that we have a good fuse and we have a good ground where um, this splice goes, so the power comes down on this white, yellow, if you follow it all the way down, it comes to another splice here, and I'll show you where that goes here in a second. So it comes down to this splice point, and it comes down in to our right tail slash stop slash turn signal lamp assembly, okay? This is what they replaced. They replaced this whole board, this whole assembly. That's basically the whole right rear um, tail lamp assembly, okay? And they thought that that was the issue for, you know, the condition. But anyways, the power feed comes down, and it comes in into the board, and it's going to power up the tail slash turn lamp on this side and the tail slash stop lamp on this side. So there's two bulbs it's powering up. And you can see it powers up this side of this bulb and this side of this bulb. And if you follow the path down to ground, it comes through and down to here. It comes through and down and over and down to this splice. And they all come over to G104, which is a shared ground, and it lights these two bulbs. Now, when you turn on your turn signals, the way that works, and this is where the issue was so I got the hat got the park lamps on this side of the circuit is hot okay the light is lit there is another coil inside of the bulb there's two filaments okay one's for turn the flashing turn signal and one's for the constant park lamp okay if you look you have another wire from this side of this bulb it comes up and over and it comes out of the right front turn signal, okay, out of the front control module. So what this wire here does from the front control module is it's a pulsed 12 volt signal 
In other words, there's a transistor inside of this front control module that switches power on, off, on, off. Basically like your flasher does in the old school cars, right? So you turn on your right turn signal, the front control module knows that you want right turn signal, and it's going to switch a transistor internal to the board um, from no power to power, okay? So 12 volts up, 12, and then it's going to find its... So it sends 12 volts down this wire. Let's say it, you know, it turns the transistor on, 12 volts comes out on this white tan, comes down, comes into the bulb, okay? And it's going to find its path to ground through the same, uh, same path as the constant park lamp feed, okay? So this one's already finding a path to ground, but all you're going to, when the computer switches that power on, it is going to light up this filament and find its path to ground. Now it's a switched power, so 12, it'll, it'll pulse the um, signal on 12 volts high, and when it comes down and through, it's going to light, light the filament, and then it's going to switch the power off causing it to go out, okay, because it's going to drop low to ground. What um, this looks like, so in order to test it, what I did was I back probed this, um, where the white tan wire comes into the connector, I back probed that, hooked my positive lead on my scope to it, and hooked the other uh, ground lead to a to battery negative put it on like a 10 volt uh 20 volt scale with like a five second screen okay and what i was able to see when i turned the signal on was i was able to see that 12 volt switching okay in a square wave okay so it would go high 12 for for you know that short duration and then it would drop down to ground high 12 um drop down to ground so let me grab a pen and i'll show you what what I'm talking about. So to get back to what I was saying, on the white tan here, what I expect to see on a scope is I expect to see ground up to 12 on for, you know, a short duration, then it's dropped back down to ground. And that's off, on off and so on and so forth okay so it's going to look like that on a on a scope 12 high zero low okay and it's getting its ground from this g105 ground now what was happening on the scope was i was seeing the square wave because of course the bulb was flashing but it was not coming down all the way to zero volts on the ground that automatically tells me that I have a ground problem. So I did have a ground problem, but it wasn't the ground itself that was the issue. It was a resistance problem. Now, I know that might seem confusing, but the reason, because if you remember right, when I'd have the headlamp switch in the off position, okay, meaning no power coming from this fuse to light up this bulb at all, but if I were to switch on the signal, um, it would still flash. And the reason for that is because if you have to turn on your hazards or whatever, okay, uh, the signals still need to be able to flash. So this front control module is smart. It knows that if you turn that multifunction switch, okay, which is down here, multifunction switch, if you turn it to right turn, okay, it's going to communicate with the front control module and know that you still want a turn signal even though your headlights aren't on, okay? And it will still send this 12-volt uh, square wave pulsed uh, 12 volt feed to this bulb and flash it and it will do it just fine and the reason it will is because the resistance in the bulb socket itself uh, with heat you know when you have a constant 12 volts coming here and finding its path to ground we're creating heat inside the socket okay because there's amperage going through these wires all right and with high resistance or with heat higher heat you get higher resistance, okay? When you have problems in the internal circuitry of the socket, um, so what I'm saying is, is 
it's kind of hard to explain. What was happening was when I'd have it in the park lamp position, this was heating up because this was on all the time, right? And it's heating up this this portion of the socket. So when I add another 12 volt uh, pulsed 12 volt feed into it, and I'm using the same ground, okay, on top of this, it's going to create a lot more heat and the resistance is going to go up. Now, what does that mean? That means this wasn't pulling itself all the way to ground. It was able to flash the bulb rapidly, but it wasn't getting a full ground, okay? The front control module automatically knew that because it's it's also inter internal to this module, and draw the internals here, and they're not going to do this on a wiring diagram, but right front turn signal where this transistor lives, okay, so what you have is you have a transistor, uh, horrible at drawing like this, but anyways, you got something like this, okay, you have a transistor, and I believe the ground there, whatever, okay, this goes out to our bulb, this is where our 12 volt square wave is going to be. The computer is actually going to monitor internal to the board. It's it's basically like having a little voltmeter in there. All right. So this is a little voltmeter. And this is the ground side of that voltmeter. Okay, the computer is going to monitor that square wave. All right. And if it sees any issue, any issue with that square wave, meaning it's not going all the way up to 12 and it's not coming all the way down um, to ground, all right, or if it doesn't like what it's seeing, it's going to flash that lamp out circuit and our lamp out warning message on the dash. Because remember, it communicates on the PCI bus, on the high speed cannon, it's communicating with the instrument cluster, okay? Right here, instrument cluster, PCI bus. So it knows it's got a bulb problem. And the reason it, it, it they did this is because say this were to short to ground here and it pulls this square wave down to zero all the time like say this wire was shorted to ground or something it's going to immediately put out lamp out uh lamp out circuit okay because it's not seeing what it wants to see on this side of the circuit so i hope that makes sense um <clears throat> now what i did to quickly diagnose it outside of checking to make sure that I had the pulse, which I did. I had the pulse uh, 12 volt feed uh, from the front control module. I just simply took, you know, at first I thought I might have an issue in the wiring itself, like a break or whatever. Um, what the issue was, was in the, the socket itself. So as I moved it, it would it would fix itself. Then it would, then it, you know, the issue would come back. It was intermittent and it was very misleading. So. Just to be 100%, since I knew the left front uh, was working just fine, I just switched the two, okay? And the problem moved to the left front uh, turn lamp when I moved the socket. So that automatically told me the socket was the issue. Now, I, could, I did take my ohm meter and I did ohm out uh, these three pins on the socket itself, and I did have a high amount of resistance um, to this ground pin, okay, from both sides. So with that high resistance, it was not high enough for it to cause a complete bulb failure because again, I could have park lamps, they were bright. I could have turn signal, they were bright. I just couldn't have both at the same time because with both at the same time, too much heat was being created within the socket and it was causing the 12 volt signal to basically not pull all the way to ground and what it was happening instead of being low like here is i was maybe coming down to two volts okay like that two volts so the square wave was coming down well here i can redraw it so instead of coming all the way down like that we were coming you know it was doing something like this and it was really choppy looking you know sometimes it would come all the way to ground then it would go up and, we'll, and it would come up to 12, and then it would come down, and then it, it maybe stop here, you know, at 3 volts, then it would come up, and it wasn't consistent, it was flashing super fast. No matter what, I knew that I had an issue with a ground, but it wasn't this ground that was the issue, okay? It was internal to the socket. 
Now, down here, if you look at the rear tail lamp, uh, turn lamp, okay, it basically works the same way. This can be daunting if you're not familiar with wiring diagrams, but remember, our power feed for our park lamps comes off this splice here from the fuse, okay? And it spl the splice is here because when you turn the lamp, uh, when you turn on the headlamp switch to park lamp or headlights, whatever, this, remember, this fuse is gonna get power from the relay and it's going to power up the back tail lamps as well down this wire, right? And it's going to power up both the turn lamp and the stop lamp so that you have running lights all the time, right? Okay, now on this wire here, it's the same thing, okay? This is the, for the turn lamps, this one here is gonna come from, if you follow the wire up, it's gonna come in right here on pin two, and it says right rear turn signal. Same thing, you're gonna have that square wave, okay? Just like you did up here. And the computer, the front control module is controlling the signal the flash, the power feed to this side of the bulb for the, the right rear tail lamp. Now, how did I, you know, I could see why they thought maybe this was the issue, but where they went wrong is they didn't check for the, um, the square wave. They didn't check to see, um, what am I trying to say? They didn't check, do the proper checks, and that's why they just shotgunned a circuit board at it and it wasn't the circuit board and these things are kind of pricey so it was you know pretty uh, you know I, I'm glad I didn't make the call you know but you got to make you got to test the circuit um, this side here the tail lamp stop lamp works the same way if you follow this side up okay works similar if you follow this side up and you go right over here you'll see that the white slash light green wire comes into pin 2 and it says right brake lamp, okay? Same thing, when you step on your brakes, this front control module is going to send an additional 12 volts, sorry, down here on this white slash light green wire, and it's going to come in, and it's going to light up that second filament, causing that ex extra brightness of the tail lamps. And they all share the same ground, okay? They all share this G104 ground. You can see the right license plate lamp shares that ground. The uh, left side assembly shares that ground. Um, all the trailer wiring, all the trailer bulbs, and if this was a dually, all the little side markers, everything. They all share that ground. So yes, of course this could be an issue, this ground, but I knew it wasn't the issue because I tested the uh, front bulb socket for that square wave and you know seeing that issue right then and there and the reason I went after the right front was because the rear lamps get their power feed from here from this splice so knowing that they had already replaced the back circuit board I'm not gonna go there because I'm like okay you know unless I have a bad ground or break in the ground in the back, but none of the lights were dim. Everything was working just fine except for that turn lamp, okay? So that's immediately told me I should go to the right front uh, headlight assembly for that. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, thanks for watching, guys.